Okay, awesome. Um, first time having a setup like this, we have one camera, two camera, three, I don't know if that one's working anymore. But um, we're gonna go into uh, something that we don't have on the channel yet. Uh, first off, we have a very special guest. This is Caleb, my roommate. Um, Caleb, if you can introduce yourself real quick. My name's Caleb. I am a D2, along with Michael, we're roomies. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Riverside, California, so not too far from where we are now in Claremont, uh, Western University being in Pomona, California. Um, I went to school at the University of Pittsburgh, and I graduated in 2018. And now I'm here. Nice. So. Nice. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are going to go into something, um, something that a lot of, like, I just didn't imagine to put on my channel for some reason. And a lot of pre-dental students were, you know, undergrads were reaching out and saying, you know, I still don't know, I have a clue of what to do during undergrad. And I don't know what that traditional path might be to get into dental school. So, um, just so happens that one of my roommates, uh, went through the traditional path. I don't know how planned it was, or we've talked about it very briefly, but right. if you can, um, kind of outline your pre-dental path and then, and then we can jump into some questions we got. And then also we can look at some, um, some schedules that the, you know, Adia puts up uh, online and stuff right. like that. Yeah. So I think even going into undergrad, I knew that, um, there's Avi. Yeah, there's Avi. Going into undergrad, I knew that I wanted to get into the medical field of some sort. Um, I didn't necessarily know if I wanted to go med or dental. And then just, I had some experiences previously in my life that kind of led me through <laughs> dental and to dental and then also just talking to mentors that I've made, um, et cetera, et cetera, it kind of pushed me toward the dental track. So I'd say my sophomore year, I really finalized that I wanted to do dentistry. Um, from that point, I did all the research that I could about prerequisite courses that needed to be taken, um, requirements, GPAs that would be put me at a competitive spot, DAT scores that would put me at a competitive spot. Um, and then obviously there are all these things about research, community service, um, shadowing. So there's a lot to be, to be balanced. And obviously there's a lot of commitment as, as it is in classes. Um, so yeah, you just have to find a way to, to incorporate all of these because dental schools are looking for a well-rounded applicant. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. it's important to not pour all your effort into one thing, but really try to expand and expand the breadth of your knowledge and experiences. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it, it kind of gets confusing at one point too. Definitely. Um, uh, and for you, you also had a busy schedule in undergrad Yeah, being on the college football team, uh, not football, baseball. I'm so sorry. Being on the okay. college baseball team. And then it, it probably took a lot of organization to try to try to just navigate yourself through the dental journey. Yeah. yeah. So like he's saying, I played baseball in college. Um, it was a, it was a really good experience. I kind of like mm -hmm. play it off, but it did. I I'm thankful for it more so in the, in the skills that it's developed in me time management, etc. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot to manage for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, it's helped me when, when you get to dental school, there's a lot to manage. Yeah, so definitely it really put me in a place in a situation where I had experienced something like it before. So yeah. it was really cool. And how did you go about organizing everything? I, I know you mentioned, you know, research, uh, the prerequisite courses and whatnot. Where did you first start off in, you know, finding out what prerequisites you need to take and in what sequence you should take them? So uh, I, I made a good relationship with my we didn't necessarily have a pre-dental major at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, so my major was just biological sciences and they just put you with a, um, a counselor that's just a bio counselor. And she kind of pointed me in the direction of the classes that I would need to take as far as prerequisites that would allow me to apply to dental school and get into dental school. Um, so that was the foundational knowledge. And then from that, I kind of just went on the internet and looked up everything I could about the schools that I knew I'd want to go to. 
um, just to see what they expected. Because they'll, they'll put a lot of things like, you have to take these courses because they're required. And then underneath it, it will be highly recommended. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of confusing. But now going through dental school and all, pretty much the entirety of the didactic curriculum, those highly recommended courses are very important. It helps out. It helps out a lot. Yeah. Um, like anatomy. Anatomy and yeah, physiology yeah. is one of them. Um, yeah. And but, yeah, coming in, it was um, some of our classmates' first time taking anatomy. Right. And so it could really help out in undergrad. Definitely. And, yeah. But yeah, I think it's just you have to make good relationships with the people who are put in place to give you that knowledge. So like I said, counselors, things like that. Then you also have to be proactive in figuring out exactly what you need to take. Because you don't want to get to the point where it's your senior year or something. And you want to apply and be a traditional student going into dental school the next year. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh shoot. I should have taken the yeah. DATs last summer. I should have taken or the DATs. I should have taken this class. And mm -hmm. then you're kind of stuck. And um, taking a gap year is not a bad thing at all. Um, but you might walk yourself into taking a gap year if you're not proactive about yeah, it. Definitely. So figuring out that schedule, really laying it out so that, you know, um, you finish all your prerequisites mm -hmm. and then also scheduling your DAT. That's huge. Um, scheduling your DAT at the perfect time so that you don't end up having to take it up in Alaska or something because time spots are limited yeah. too on, yeah, on DAT. That is true. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of, I kind of wish that I would have taken mine a little bit earlier. I took mine in June and then I applied in July. Um, so I kind of was just banking on myself getting wow. the score that I needed. Yeah. And that was my first time taking it. So luckily it all panned out well, but I kind of wish that I would have given myself a little bit more time in case it didn't. Mm -hmm. And then I could have retaken it and still applied early in the cycle. Um, but yeah. So that means you, did you study for a month? only yeah. or you studied for a month yeah or what did you end up using um so this is another thing that athletics actually provided me with which was a super awesome um university of pittsburgh they if any person wants to go to a graduate school they'll provide you with a kaplan course so mm. i took a it was like a four week four days a week online course okay okay that's like the 12 hours a day. Yeah, it was a type. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot, but um, it was worth it. Yeah. Learned a lot. Mm -hmm. so. I've heard a lot of people using Kaplan, you know, and it, it, mixed reviews on Kaplan, but yeah. it does work for people. So yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I, I was wondering, um, while you're talking about that, did you also do some shadowing in between and how'd you go about finding that show, those shadowing opportunities? So I didn't have the opportunity to shadow during school at all mm. um with my baseball schedule my coaches mandated that i'd play in the summer as well so i'd be busy all all school year and then the summer i'd be playing too um but there was one semester one summer where i was just like i went up to my coach and i was i was just like man i can't do this this summer because i need to get some of this stuff done so that summer i basically shadowed every single day oh wow um Got all of your hours done. Yeah. And I think it's like a minimum of, of 200 hours. It's, it differs for school. Yeah, for school. I think if you have, if you have uh, 100 hours and then you, you have 100 hours doing awesome community service, like, mm -hmm. I think those things can kind of be interchangeable. Mm -hmm. um, I, on, my, on my resume, I think I only had maybe 100 hours of shadowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't think that you need like the some people will come in and say they shadow for a thousand hours. Mm. Like, that's great. Yeah. But I don't think it's necessary. Definitely. And I don't think, you know, thinking back on all the pre-dental, um, pre-dental events that I went to where like pre-dental admissions people would come and speak to us. They never really emphasized shadowing. Mm -hmm. Um, this isn't to downplay shadowing at all. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely get the experience. Definitely get it so that, you know, um, that dentistry is the right field for you and that, you know, you can talk about something at, you know, during your interview, but, um, you know, it's not as weighted. I feel like it, mm -hmm. it definitely, um, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, get the basic requirements done. And if you get that, that's good enough to apply and then, you know, push yourself forward from there. Um, that brings me to one question. I got one question on, on my email. 
Um, and you know, it, it's likely that some people, um, they emphasize their extracurricular activities more, volunteering more, and they're saying, you know, somewhere along the lines, you may think, man, this event's gonna, it's the event that's gonna get me in. It's gonna be the networking opportunity. It's gonna give me enough hours. It's gonna give me the unique experience for dental schools to be like, dang, this guy's awesome. But in terms of extracurriculars versus GPA and DAT score, where do you feel like, you know, that's weighted out? Do you feel like dental schools will look at extracurricular activities more or DAT, GPA? I feel like it's yeah. GPA, DAT for sure. Yeah. I'm sure that you've interacted with um, some of our faculties that will screen for uh, applications mm -hmm. a little bit more than I have. Mm -hmm. But um, from my experience, it kind of works like they'll get your application, they'll see your GPA and your DAT. If it's way below what they would expect, then they'll kind of put it to the side, right. not the good side. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that that's important because that's pretty much the first thing that they look for. Mm -hmm. um, if they, if you have average GPA and average DAT, they might open your application and see all these amazing extracurriculars that you've done, all this crazy research, everything, and that's obviously a plus for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as far as weight from the beginning, GPA and DAT, I think those pretty much trump everything. Yeah, so. definitely. No, and you you mentioned just in my in my past, I have interacted with you know some pre dental advisors, and I think downright it just comes down to first off, it comes out down to GPA DAT as a screening process, and once you make that certain average DAT GPA. Um, that's when they start looking at all your extracurriculars and that's when they start saying, oh wow, this person made a trip to Guatemala right. or which by the way we have coming up soon, but, um, no, w they made a trip to Guatemala. They made an influence on the dental field. I, I want this person for an interview. I want to find out more about right. this person. I feel like that's what's initially going to get you in. Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So definitely focus on your academics. Yes. Um, Yes. Yeah. And this is another reason why I wanted to talk to you too, because you had this crazy baseball uh, schedule. And even when you weren't out playing a game, you were also weight training and also, you know, practicing on the field. But you managed to get the study skills down to get the grades, get the DAT score, and then apply right away. Uh, what what kept you focused? And, you know, I, I, you know, I've actually asked you this question before. And I asked you, how do you stay focused? And you're like, I just do. But <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure there is more behind that, you know. Um, what, what were some of those things that you... So used? I'm sure the NCAA wouldn't like me to say this because they, they mandate that we can only have 20 hours of practice in a week. Mm. Uh, but undergrad with baseball, it was a, at least a 70-hour commitment. Um, and then along with that, there were multiple weeks where we'd leave on Wednesday and we wouldn't get back till Sunday night. Wow. Um, so I'd miss all that class and have to figure out ways to basically make up that work. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of it just came down to the fact that I wasn't going to accept anything from myself more than what I knew I could do. Mm -hmm. That sounds super cliche, but I mean, yeah. I knew that I was, had the capability to do well in school. And it had been instilled in me from the time I was just a little kid. And I wasn't going to let me being busy or me being tired or me not wanting to do it, not want, not do yeah. it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was just something that I knew I had to do. Mm -hmm. So if there were days where I'd get home, get to the airport at one o'clock on a Sunday morning, and then, well, I guess Monday morning, and then have class at 8 a.m. and have an exam at 8 a.m., I knew I had to go to the library and study. I couldn't go home and sleep even when I was tired. I had to go study. So mm -hmm. it didn't matter if I got two hours of sleep or six hours of sleep or whatever. Like I was just going to do what it took. Yeah. And it's, just, I don't know, just determination. I think a lot of perseverance there yeah. too. I, I think it's so easy to come home and just be like, man, I just need a few hours to myself. Come home, lay on the couch, and then just stay on the couch or move in, into your bedroom and then just end up falling asleep. That happened to me a lot in undergrad. Yeah. Um, but you pushed yourself to go to the library. It's, it sounds like you, you really made the environment You just have to have your priorities. Right. You just yeah. have to have your priorities straight. Um, a lot of the people that I was around, they did not take school seriously, which mm -hmm. is fine. That was not their priority. Um, 
but my priority was doing well in school, getting into whatever professional school I decided. And yeah, just, you just have to set that for yourself and you mm -hmm. can't stray from it at all. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a, lo a lot of good practices, a lot of good ha habits mm -hmm. really. Um, and there's, there's this thing that I talk about with my girlfriend a lot is um, the habit of treating yourself. And then you get into that cycle a little bit too much and you end up treating yourself every day. <laughs> when in reality, it's like, you, you gotta be grinding right now, you know? You gotta put in your work, you gotta, um, you gotta you know, make dues to get to, get to dental school mm -hmm. if you really want that to be, be your goal. So yeah, definitely yeah. inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what is it? Uh, you, I don't know if you mentioned this, uh, you mentioned this earlier, you said you majored in so at yeah. Pitt, it was called Biological Sciences. Yeah. Um, that basically basically means that we it's just bio. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things that they did, though, is if you majored in Biological Sciences, you also minored in chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I got a minor in chem along with oh, it. Wow. Um, but as far as what you major in to get to dental school... Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Right. Uh, we have people in our class. Our other roommate, Javier, he, ma he majored in nutrition and dietetics. Um, we have a girl who majored in cultural anthropology. Mm -hmm. um, Another girl who majored in dance. Right. Yeah. 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 And I mean, there's just yeah. endless possibilities with what you do. It's just you need to take the prerequisite courses. So most of the time it's bio one and two, mm -hmm. bio one and two lab, mm -hmm. chem one and two, chem one and two lab. Ochem one and two, Ochem one and two lab physics, physics one two. Um, on that note, physics actually is, online it'll say you only need physics one and two, and physics one and two lab, but dental schools generally want to see that you finish that third course, physics right. three and physics three lab. But yeah, well, everything you mentioned there is you know the general basics, um, and and on top of that, you'll be able to find online for specific programs what courses they recommend mm -hmm. but yeah you kind of just answered the question there i um that i was trying to get into uh what you know um what did you major in and uh, do majors matter but on that note also another question i frequently get is does the college i go to matter does the prestige of the school that i go to matter and it's getting to a point for me where i feel like it really doesn't matter where you end up going for undergrad as mm -hmm. long as you take those prerequisites um, you, no matter what major you, you know, whether it be a major in economics, you take the science prerequisites along with your requirements for economics, do well in those science courses as well as your economics, mm -hmm. you want to graduate, um, and, and, you know, graduate with a good GPA. Is that your understanding too? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I have a sister that's a senior in high school right now and I've been telling that to her too, because she's she's really caught up in in the big flashy names, and that's all that's all fine. Um, if you go to an Ivy League school, that's amazing. Props to you. Um, but I think as far as applications and and schools looking at at you as an applicant, I think it comes down to a lot more personal things rather than just the name of the university that you attended. Mm -hmm. um, GPAs and 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 things like that. It doesn't matter where you go; it's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. especially if you're if you are taking these science courses as prerequisites or as your major. Those are tough, mm -hmm. and those are going to affect your GPA, either in a good way or a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, so I th I really don't think it matters. We have such a great mix of people from different universities at our school. It's mm -hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, all different, and kinds, some of so. which did actually did their. Um, prerequisites at a community college first right. you know, and then transferred into a university although they didn't really need to transfer into a university mm -hmm. um, they ended up doing that and you know completed their their um, what is it their prerequisites associates. or associates yeah. or even bachelors for a fraction of the cost because right. they did half of it at a community service college yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that also leads me into a different segue we want to talk about this in a different video um, about um, financials really but um, coming into dental school did you we'll, we'll go into this more in a different video but coming into dental school did you understand kind of the costs of everything and did that 
prepare you more as a dental student, do you believe? Or did you, what kind of research did you do in that um, So I think you could take either one, or, one of two routes. You can either not research it at all, or like me, I researched it way too much. Um, I was looking at it every single day. It's all I could think about. It was really, it was not fun. Yeah. Um, for yeah. a semester of dental school, there were days where I would totally enjoy what we were doing, but I would get there and I would think about like how much money I was spending that day mm-hmm. on school or like what how much it's costing was. you. Or yeah. You know. So don't do that. Mm. Don't do that. You need to enjoy your time in dental school. And there are different strategies. Like Michael said, we'll talk about it in, a, in another video. But there are different strategies that you can apply to try to get yourself out of that hole. Um, there are different programs, all this stuff. Um, so it's really just understanding that the field of dentistry gives you so much opportunity and it's just whether or not you want to seize that opportunity because that's going to allow you to be in the best position to be financially successful. Mm -hmm. So definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, I have one more question here. Um, it, someone was asking what exactly is rolling admissions? Um, and I was wondering if you can talk about that real quick and then, go into some other questions that we have on Instagram cool. on Instagram and um, and then we'll end off with um, whatever we want to end up yeah. with yeah so rolling admissions I'm pretty sure that admissions open in June or July um, June officially June nowadays. officially yeah so they'll open in June and then you can apply pretty much until what is it January February yeah. March yeah February yeah yeah, yeah. um and uh, interviews are going on during that whole process. So what happens is, say someone applies in June or July. Mm-hmm. That's when I applied. I got an interview in September, mm-hmm. and then I got accepted December mm. one. Yeah. Um, but this whole time, other people are applying. Other people are getting interviews. Other people are getting accepted. Um, so as far as when would be the best time, obviously it would be early as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, if you get from different people that I've talked to, if you don't do as well on your DAT as you'd want, it would be better to wait a couple months, get a really good score and then apply rather than apply in July with a, with a lower score. Um, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. No. Um, but yeah, there's basically a wide range of months where you can apply and it gives you a little bit of leeway if you want to get certain things on your resume, certain things on your application, if you want to take or retake the DAT. Um, but like I said, personally, I think that the earlier you apply, the better mm-hmm. um, because you're competing against less people. Yeah, I so. agree. I agree. I think there, um, there are a lot of factors that go into applications and you know, timing is definitely one of them Mm -hmm. um you want to get your application in as um close to the you know application open date as possible in order to get as many eyes on your application as possible throughout the whole application process and it's a long and arduous process so you definitely want to make sure that you have you know everything squared away um when you apply um and not many people know this you can actually fill out the whole application submit it and then um, there's, a, you know, say that you didn't take your DAT or anything, you can submit your DAT at a later time. That's actually what I did. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. cause I didn't have my DAT, like the official scores. Mm-hmm. I was able to just input it saying I, that you'll, you'll take the DAT, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I applied and then I took the DAT like that week. Mm-hmm. I put in my unofficial score, the one that pops up on the screen right after you finish. And then obviously it takes a little bit for them to get the official score. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, if there's any advice when it comes to that, just yeah. try to apply as soon as you can if you feel like your your application is worthy. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. put everything in right. um, as soon as possible. Same thing with your letter of recommendations too. You can apply. Yeah, that has you have to yeah. be so proactive with those. Yeah, so. actually, who did you end up asking for your letter of recommendations? For and when actually? I actually asked them the year before I applied. Mm. Um, really good because I, I had friends who had a, applied to dental school med school and they told me that there was a time when um, 
There was a time when everybody's asking their professors for letters of rec. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously that puts a lot of stress on the professor. So the earlier you can do it, the better. Yeah. Especially if you were pro approach them and you're like, hey, I'm applying to dental school. They'll ask you, well, when? And you're like, in a year. Yeah. That That's just such a relief for them because it's like, oh, I have it takes plenty the, of time. Yeah, it takes yeah. a lot of stress off of their minds. Yeah, so. yeah. And it's it's very professional too. Right. Yeah, but I asked, a, I had a physiology professor, um, physics professor, just people that I had made relationships with. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had my baseball coach. So... I think he liked me, even though he'd yell at me every day. Yeah. But, uh... Conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just a wide range of people. Mm -hmm. so. Definitely. And um, I believe right now you do need um, two science professors and one character. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere along the lines, maybe a dental professional, right. too. Um, yeah, but, yeah, these are very, like, dentistry 101 type of things, but it it's often overlooked because, you know, um, pre-dental advisors or even dental students, dental advisors that are trying to help pre-dental students out, it's just like, it's just assumed that everyone knows this yeah. because all the information is online. Right. But it's, it's good to have one person, you know, come bring it down and, you know, package it all. And, you know, hopefully we can put this on, on the channel and then um, it'll help a lot of undergraduate students out. Yeah. You know, thank you so much for sitting down, doing this Instagram live. Also recording it for the YouTube video. Um, I you're you're gonna be on the channel again. Um, and talking about finance. Talking maybe. about finance. We'll talk about other cool stuff too. Cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for all the questions. If you have any questions for Caleb, reach out to me. And then you know I live with this guy, so I can always address it to him. And um, yeah, thank you for everything. Do you have anything to say? Yeah. Uh, good luck, everybody. Alrighty. Well, we'll end off with this. One, two, three. Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching. Normally at the end of one of these, I put a cute puppy video, but I have a quick announcement. I've teamed up with Chia Smiles to do a giveaway. Chia Smiles is a footwear company that believes that our passion for dentistry should be incorporated with our lifestyle. Uh, dentistry is already a large part of our lives and it should show in more areas than just our scrubs. For that matter, if you go on my Instagram now, you can find the descriptions of this giveaway all listed there in a post and in the description below. For full disclosure, Chia Smiles is a company that a friend of mine from my master's program started this past year. And to help celebrate our friendship and the special holiday, we want to do this giveaway together to help remind others to be thankful for the ones closest to them and also for the ones that have helped them to get to where they are today. As always, thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, please let me know. And until next time, thank you so much for your support.